I tested the new SDXL ControNet models after the release by Sincere. The new version includes individual models as well as an all-in-one union model for working alongside other ControNet processes. So I'll show how to properly download, store and use the SDXL models individually. I'll download the union ControNet model as well and compare the results generated by both options. The individual models can be downloaded on this page by Sincere and for now these are a few models listed here. I'll begin with the depth control net model, right click to open in a new tab, go to the files and versions tab, scroll down to the diffusion PyTorch model, click on the right arrow to download, save the file into the correct directory under comfy UI are your models and control net folder. I'll create a new folder here and rename this to SDXL. To easily recognize the model names, you can rename them. I'll rename mine to Depth SDXL Sincere. Uh, save this once it's done. Back to the page, I'll also download the Open Pose model. Once again, we right click to open this, go to the files and versions, scroll down to see the Diffusion PyTorch model. So I'll download this one by using the arrow. And uh, I'll rename this to Open Pose SDXL Sincere into the same folder. Next, we go back to the models page and follow the same process for the Kani model. So I have gone ahead to download and install my favorite controlled models here in my folder. Once all is done, I'll open up Comfy UI. Let's load a default workflow so you can also build an SDXL workflow from scratch on your own. I'll zoom into the load checkpoint node. To generate suitable images, we need an SDXL checkpoint. I have chosen the Fenrix XL, but you can also use any other SDXL model you want to try. Quickly, I'll update these nodes to have green as the positive prompt and also change this to red as the negative prompt. For a good SDXL resolution, I'll also change the aspect ratio, so I'll go for 768 by 1344. Next, I'll zoom into the positive prompt. So I'll go ahead to highlight all of this in the positive prompt, and uh, I'll paste the prompt I already have in here. As a Shaolin monk performing a stunt on a skateboard, now I'll paste in the negative prompt I've also prepared here. So next, we move to the case sampler in here, change this to a fixed seed number, which you can easily remember. I'll leave everything at default, and from here, I'll hit Q prompt, and let's see what we get by using the SDXL workflow. All right, so this is not bad and this is looking great. I like the resolution from the checkpoint. However, we still need to use the SDXL control net models to control the image. So I'll scroll up here and let's set up our SDXL control net nodes to do this. We need a load image, so I'll right click to add a node. I'll go down to the image and select load image. I'll drag and drop my reference image here. Next, there are three parts you need to load to work with ControNet. So first of all is the ControNet model. So I'll right click to add a node. I'll go down to Loaders and hit ControNet model. Inside the node, I'm going to choose the Depth SDXL model, which we just downloaded by Sincere. The second requirement for ControNet is the ControNet processor node. If you don't see the processor nodes, go to the manager, click on custom nodes manager. And once this is open, search for control net. Install the one by Fanovel 16 and make sure you are using the auxiliary processes. Once the installation is done, close, update all and restart comfy. To find your processes installed, you right click, add node, go to control net processes, select the normal and depth and I'll choose depth anything. Usually your processor needs to match up to the control net model which you choose. The third requirement is to use the apply control net node. To get this, I'll quickly drag this out to easily show me what I can select next. Then I'll select the control net apply advanced node. Let's connect the image to the processor, then into the apply control net node. Also drag this out to see a preview of what the depth image will look like. I'll right click to add a group and I'll place all of this into one group and I'll rename this to depth. So um, let's go ahead to try multiple control net models to see the outcome still using the models by Sincere. I have a low checkpoint model node. I'll go for a processor and I'll be using the open pose processor. I'll drag out from the load control net model to find the apply control net advanced once again. Inside the load control net model, make sure you have the open pose we just downloaded SDXL to use. 
and I'll connect the processor node for open pose into the apply control net node. From here, I'll also reroute the main image to also connect this to the processor of the open pose node. I also want to see a preview of the open pose image. So let's tidy up things just a little bit here and let us group all of this and then I'll rename it to open pose for an easy presentation. And let's see if this is all working correctly with no errors. All right, so everything is looking good from the preview nodes. So let's join this to influence the first image we generated. I'll move this up, which was our text to image. I'll space this out and I'll disconnect uh, the positive and also the negative from the case sampler. Drag the positive into the apply control net node of the depth group and also do the same for the negative prompt. And now this goes into the open pose group from the positive and the negative. Finally, uh, they all come down into the case sampler from the control net groups. I'll move ahead to change the case sampler seed also to 300. And let's generate the image and take a look by adding the SDXL control net models. All right, so this followed the prompt closely, especially with the body position. I like that the background was also removed. No obvious disfigured body parts so far. And this gets even better because we can now use one control net loader into multiple control nets to work with different processes. So we can put this to the test by using the same workflow and then we compare the results. So I'll visit another page here by Sincere where we can find the union control net model. So this includes all control nets separate models and this works well from the examples here with multi control nets. So to get the models, uh, we first go to files and versions. We are only going to download this PyTorch model here, which is 2.5 gigs only compared to downloading multiple um, control net models. So click to download from the page, save it into your comfy UI folder under models, control net, I have my SDXL folder and I recommend you rename the file name to ControlNet Union SDXL. Once this is installed, refresh Comfy and let's apply this to the workflow. I would right click to add a node, go to Loaders and then Load ControlNet Model. In here, we are going to select the ControlNet Union SDXL model we just downloaded. This will replace both ControlNet models we used earlier, so we only need the processor for each group. I will disconnect the depth model node and move it to the side. Also, I'm going to disconnect the open pose model and move this also to the side. So from here, I'll drag from the all-in-one control net model into the apply control net node for the depth control net and also I'll do the same for the open pose group. So this is as simple as that. It will automatically assign the right models to the specific processes of each group. So I'll zoom out here, let's bypass the original results so we can compare the new results from the SDXL Union model. I'll also drag to create another preview node, rename this to SDXL Union. Uh, let's go ahead to QPrompt again and let's see the results by using the all-in-one control net model. Alright, so we have something almost similar. But most importantly, the model influences the image closely to the reference image. So everything is still looking good and this encourages more use of the SDXL models. This might still need a little improvement. So let's see if the Union model is also consistent with some LoRa models. I'll include two LoRa models here. I found these models on Civit AI. Make sure the LoRa files you download are also SDXL models. Place them into the right directory for stable diffusion. I have redirected Comfy UI to share the same model part I have for Automatic 1111 as well. So I've explained how you can save some space by doing that in the top right corner. Back into Comfy UI, I zoom in here and I'm using an SDXL checkpoint for anime. I'll include a link in the description. Also, I have included two LoRa files which we downloaded from Civit AI. I also edit the prompt medium to have an anime ad style. So I'll zoom out here and hit Q prompt. Let's see the SDXL results for consistency with the ControlNet Union model. Everything here is working so far by pushing the SDXL Union model. It still works great alongside the SDXL LoRa's. We have the same depth so far and the pose of the image is still consistent. I did a little more exploration so you could still invest some time in the fine tuning using different styles and checkpoints to see what you come up with. 
If your generations are not matching up, make sure to modify the control net resolutions of the preprocessors to match up to your image size. Animating with SDXL models could be even more exciting, so check out this video for a beginner's guide and explanation. If this was helpful in any way, don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next video.